Good news for us, the lockdown has been extended in Malaysia until May the 12th, so we can relax. I mean, I know a lot of people are really upset about this, but we're not because the uncertainty, if it shuts down here, is where do we go? I mean, okay, so, I've, as we've said before, I've got a bad back, and my wife's been giving me some deep massages recently, which is making me feel an awful lot better, but I need a back brace. I used to, we've got to go out into the big bad world of COVID-19. Today's just quite a bit of a meh day. Doesn't really change the temperature. It's still probably like 30 to 32 degrees. Anyway, we're going shopping and we're taking the car. What I'm also taking the opportunity to do while I'm out is to give the car a quick run because I'm getting fed up with getting the battery charger out to get the damn thing started every day. So we're going to Citrine Hub. So, okay, so we're in the car park at Citrine Hub. Now let's go do a quick shop. The great thing about Mr. DIY is it's got all sorts of everything, so you just come out and you find what you're looking for. Sometimes you don't, but often you do. Okay, mission accomplished. We have our back brace plus a few other bits and pieces, so now. Shopping is finished. That's important. This is the reason I went out. So all those probably hating on me for going My back's been giving me so much trouble. This is this deep, quite this deep. So my YouTube journey has been long and hard. I've been making videos now for two years, four months, and I'm approaching 1,000 subscribers very slowly, but I am definitely approaching it. So what I thought I'd do is tell you what I have learned in two and a half years and over 300 videos of YouTubing. First thing I've learned is the quality of sound is super important. Secondly, um, it really isn't the gear. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Air Joe, he says all you really need to start a YouTube channel is a telephone, a microphone, and a tripod. And he's correct. And I wish I'd come to that realization um, two and a half years ago. I could have saved myself a load of money. In fact, now, I'm not saying that there's no use in this world for good, expensive cameras. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're starting out in YouTube, use your telephone. Because quite frankly, you have a telephone with you, everybody's got one. It doesn't have to be a 4K. We're filming this on 1080p. Um, so I look today, 77% of my people, my viewers, are viewing on a mobile device, okay? I think we buy things to it's the same as a golf player. Golf, when I tried playing golf, oh, I can't putt any different putter. Oh, I can't drive any different driver. You just, you keep buying more stuff because you're convinced that's what's going to make you a better player. When really the only thing that makes you a better player is practice, practice, practice. Just like look around you in the world. You see the slums of Brazil or you see the sort of dry, arid wastes of Africa and there are kids there playing football with a ball made out of tape or a tin can or something and they go on to be great players because they're having to practice with something that is so difficult that when they're given a ball it's like wow this is so much easier so get out there with your telephone start making youtube videos start building up viewers start getting a, a subscriber base 
buying the best camera in the world doesn't make you a good vlogger, okay? Nothing will make you a good vlogger except practice. Some people are born to this, some people are naturals. People like me, it's just a long, hard, sl slow slog of learning. To get your style, don't copy everybody else. I mean, to a degree, we all learn from somebody else. So take what other people are doing and think, okay, I can learn from that. But you need to create your style. Because the only thing that your viewer is concerned with is, is your, is your content compelling? They don't, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. If you're doing like a nature channel or a travel channel or stuff like that, people may really want the most glorious landscapes and 4K this and, but in, if you're doing like a vlog, like I'm doing, realistically, the quality of the picture isn't the important thing. It's the content that goes within it. So within two and a half years, nearly, of vlogging, I've almost got a thousand subscribers, 25 to go, I think. That's something I never thought I'd achieve. And lots of people I see, you go on like Reddit or place like that where there are like new YouTuber um, groups and like, oh, I've made five videos and nobody's watching me. What am I doing wrong? I made over 100 videos in my first year. I had 100 subscribers I'd made. It was just by hard work. It took me a year to get 100. You don't get thousands of subscribers with your first few videos just like that it doesn't work some people do janelle elena she got millions but normal people there is for every casey neistat there's a million like me okay so the only way that you're going to succeed is if you keep making videos keep making better content quality of the content is the thing it's not quality of the picture as such. I mean, if 77% of the people viewing your vlog on their telephone, it isn't going to be the most important thing, is it? The quality of the picture. It's the message you're giving them. So this, I want to recap. So the most important things are, so start filming, get good sound, practice your editing. Editing is, is a, <sighs> editing is a dark art. It can be as simple as my edits, which are just basically very linear, just cut the story, boom. Or you can be someone like A. Joe or the other me, or Dan Mace, and make like mini bits of art from your, your film, okay? Editing is a whole different thing, and the only way you'll learn that is by practicing. Edit films, edit films. The more you go on, the more you decide what you like doing, what you don't like doing with your editing. Is it, does it want to be complicated? Does it want to be simple? Here's the deal. For two years, three months, pretty much, Apart from a short time when I started, I've been making videos on cameras, not on telephone. And I've been editing on my computer. In fact, a bit about a year ago now, I went out and spent much more money than I could really afford on a computer because uh, my computer was struggling to do anything editing wise, just wasn't c uh, coping at all with what I was doing. Now, the last few videos, not all of them, but a, a, a fair portion of them I've just filmed and edited on my telephone on using a program called Vlo, V-L-L-O, and it's so freeing. It's quick, it's easy, and you know, if you've got your telephone, you've got your microphone, which costs nothing. These things for your telephone cost nothing. A dollar, a couple of dollars, eh? five, ten ring it, ten ring it, maybe fifteen ring it. Um, a tripod, because you need to put your phone down sometime. You know, I, you want distance sometimes, you want to get further away. That's why a microphone's important. You can obviously definitely film sound without a microphone, but as you move back and forwards from the phone, it all goes horribly wrong. Uh, so many people think they're going to they're gonna be vloggers and be the next Casey Neistat, and then after 100 videos and no views, or very low views, they just give up. You can't give up in this game. There are millions of videos posted every day. Why should people pick yours? In fact, how can any people even find yours? The only way they do it is by you joining their community and them finding you through that community. Don't do sub for sub. That's just the most bullshit thing in the world. Oh, but I need a thousand subscribers before I can monetize. Yeah, you also need 4,000 watch hours. So what, you've got a thousand subscribers who are basically people who said, sub for me, I'm a struggling YouTuber. And you're like, okay, sub back, oh, sorry YouTuber. And neither of you watch each other's stuff because you both know it's shit. 
So what happens? You have a thousand subscribers and no watch time. Grow organically. Here's the only way you get subscribers. Make better content. I'm fully aware of that. I put out a video a few a week or so ago, which was called Epic Fail, which was shit. I should never really put it out. I was just desperate to keep a daily video going. So that's kind of what I would say out of, out of all of the things I've learned doing YouTube, just keep making films. You'll get One of the other things I think is really important if you're a YouTuber, okay, use YouTube. Go onto YouTube, search, think, okay, I want to do some macro photography. Do a search on YouTube, macro photography. You'll find lots of people showing you how to do macro photography. If you want to learn how to edit in DaVinci or in Premiere Pro or even in Flow, put it into YouTube. You'll find somebody telling you how to do it. YouTube is probably the best resource for a YouTuber. So don't be afraid to use it. There'll be a lot of rubbish on there. That's the great thing. You'll see a lot of people showing you how to do something. You think, I could do this better. And you know the great thing? You can, you can make your own film and say, this is better than that one, here you are. If you can stand back and look at what you do and think that's not good, that's not great, you'll get better. You just have to practice. Take care.